We want to tell you how excited we are to see you sitting in the pews this morning. We want to let you know that we just love you. And we want you to know that God loves you too. And as you go through this week, and as we look towards Wednesday, when we will celebrate the coming of Christ, the birth of Christ, we ask you to do that with, a, with this much joy. But we also ask you to remember those who may not be so joyful because they have experienced death in the family. And there are some who are themselves are not doing well. Some are in ICU and some are sick at home and so on. So we would ask you to remember them too. So as you are being joyful, as you are expressing your joy uh, to the Lord and, and letting him know how much you appreciate his sending his son to save us from ourselves and from our sins, please, please consider those who may not be quite so joyful. We're going to be led by Deacon Snipes in song and uh, Deacon Turner in scripture and then Deacon Chester in prayer. Good morning, church. Good morning. As we stand, uh, continuing on with our Christmas songs, we're going to sing this morning, uh, Come Let Us Adore Him. And we continue to remember that Jesus is the reason for this season. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord, for he alone is worth. The scripture this morning is going to come from the other side of our fulfillment, our lesson, and it's after Mary has went and visited Elizabeth, her cousin, and this is what she says in verse 46. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble, humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Verse 50 says, his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel member it remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated.
Let's prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Good morning, Father. There are so many times when we feel like the world has gotten the best of us. We're beat down, confused, tired, sick. It seems like our burdens are more than we can carry. We lay down at night and we don't get any rest. Issues cloud our hearts and minds. Seems like there's trouble on every side. Seems like every time we get one step ahead, something knocks us back and we have to start all over again. Our health challenges us. Sometimes in the mornings we feel like our legs don't want to cooperate. The hitch in the back feels a little worse. It just seems like there's so many times when it's just so hard to go on. But you knew that we would show up at this place. So that's why you put a lily in the valley. That's why you gave us a bright and morning star. That's why you decided over 2,000 years ago that you would send us a savior. One who would give us hope, would give us joy, would put peace in our hearts when there's trouble on every side, would give us the ability to persevere when all of the weight seems like it's laying on our shoulders. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And your Bible says that it's new every morning. A God so good, he won't even give us leftover mercy. But decides that we need the best of his love. And that's why he came. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Because God said, those are my children. And as hard as the world is on them, I'm going to give them a way to make it every day. I'm going to be there when they're tired. I'm going to be there when they need some food. I'm going to heal their bodies when they're sick. I'm going to show up in the courthouse. I'm going to show up in the doctor's office. I'm going to show up for them when their children are acting up. I'm going to show up when the bills are too high. I will be there and I will never leave them alone. For that, Lord, we are truly thankful. Bless you, Heavenly Father. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Sometimes we forget that you've made all those promises. Sometimes we let fear get the best of us. Sometimes we don't know why we do things, but we do them anyway. But you said, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And you seal that with your son, Jesus. Oh, the hope and the forgiveness of the world. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray right now that you would be pleased with our praise. We pray right now, Father, that you would show up and bless us with your presence. We pray right now, Father, that your anointing would fall fresh on us. We pray right now for the, the singers that are going to lift up your voice. We pray right now for the one who will bring the message, dip her deep in your storehouse, Lord. We pray right now for all those that have lost loved ones. We pray right now for comfort of their hearts. We pray right now for those that are in need of a financial blessing. We pray for prosperity for them. We pray for those that are in the standing in the need of some healing, Father. We pray for your touch and your blessing to be upon them. We pray for this church, Lord, that you would guide her and keep her and hold her in your loving arms and make a way out of no way for her. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your help. We thank you for the prosperity. We thank you, Lord, because you are a good God. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, we just love you. And we pray that you'd be pleased with our praise. And we ask these and all blessings in the precious name of our Savior. Our Savior, the one who loves us more than anything else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, come all ye faithful. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bed, Lamb, come, and behold him, born the King of Angels, King of Angels, oh, come, let us, oh, come, let us. 
blessing. whether the privilege of being an executive pastor, we're going to ask our chair to come and give the deacon response. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, Green Forest. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, I am uh, Deacon James Garner, and uh, I will be uh, welcoming, welcoming any guests and visitors that we have today. Uh, do we have any visitors with us this uh, Sunday right before Christmas? Do we have any visitors with us today here at Green Forest? Please stand up. Hold up for one minute there. One second. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. If you would remain standing just a moment, uh, the ushers are passing out some information to you. Uh, on behalf of the Green Forest family, uh, specifically our pastor, Reverend Dennis Mitchell, his lovely wife, Pam, all of the members of our congregation, uh, especially the deaconship, we'd like to welcome you to our 745 service. We are indeed blessed by your presence. Uh, we know it may seem cliche as when we say that there are numerous churches that you pass by, but we're just glad that you came to Green Forest. You know, if you will look at your bulletin, you'll see different uh, opportunities to help serve and worship with us. We have numerous ministries here at the church. Please take some time and read this bulletin. And if you are uh, I'll have some other time. Please uh, take a moment and look at the Green Forest website, which is greenforest.org. It always has a lot of very good information there, as well as our archives of sermons and different things. Uh, again, we are blessed by your presence. We ask you to come and visit with us again and again and again. And when you are tired of visiting with us, please join us. God bless you. You may be seated. Good morning. Man, ain't you excited just to be here right before, before Christmas and, you know, the coming of the, the God child and, you know, it just, it just feel like the spirit's in the air. You know, it, things are just well, amen. So, 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 anybody here having a birthday this week? Birthday, birthdays, birthdays, birthdays. All right. Happy birthday, amen. All right. I almost became a Christmas baby. Amen, 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 amen. But I do have two anniversaries today. Um, Deacon, uh, excuse me, Sister Mary and Deacon Mary O'Norman, uh, they are celebrating their 44th wedding anniversary yeah. on yesterday. Amen, the Normans. <laughs> amen. Congratulations. And then we got uh, Brother Henry and Barry Brown, their ursary. Uh, they're celebrating their 40, 30 year of marriage yeah. on Friday. Amen. Yeah. The Browns, where are you? Wave your hand. Well, they must be here. Oh, there she is. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. This is a awesome time to be here. But uh, as we come and okay. Thank you. Bud Camp is already going to keep us right. Amen, amen, amen. But we're going to come and greet each other and give each other a hug, a kiss, you know, a handshake. Ask them how they're doing. And if you don't know the person, ask them who they are. Amen. But this is just family. And I just want to say that Friday night and Saturday, I saw what could happen when churches come together as one. So we have some worship up in here, amen, amen. But it's because it ain't but one church. Maybe a lot of churches, but it ain't but one church. And we only got one Lord. Okay, so we're going to give God all the praise. Even today, we're just going to continue to praise and worship, amen. We're going to have a high time up in here today, amen. So let's greet one another, amen.
Elaine, my sons Matthew and Jonathan are here to light the uh, candle for the fourth Sunday of Advent, which represents love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved him, but that he loved us. And he sent the son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also out to love one another. We rejoice that Christmas is a time of prayer and of open hearts and we sing, when we sing songs of joy. Christmas is a time of worship, the moment when, we, when the busiest of us pause and wonder. Christmas happens when God comes to us in love through Jesus Christ and fills us with love for all humankind. This candle represents love because Christ loved us enough to come to, the, to earth so that all people can be saved. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into our darkness. With the coming of this light, there is love. Such great love helps us to love both God and one another. Let us all pray. Oh God, thank you that Jesus showed your love for every person. Babies and children, the elderly and young people, those who were strong, those who were weak, those who were sick, and those who were poor. Come to us in this Advent season and give us love in our hearts for all persons. Amen.
did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great Amen. Give us some praise. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Glory. Little chick and angel. Amen. Praise God. The, drum, the dance ministry. Amen. Let's turn to our feet for praise and worship. Amen. They set the table for us just right. It was a silent night and a holy night with the baby Jesus. Amen. All was calm and all was bright. And we wanted to just be able to sleep in heavenly peace. Amen. Let's sing that together. This is just a traditional silent night. Silent night. Oh, sleep in hay. Come on. Fully peace. Oh, silent night. Silent night. Silent night. Holy night. Holy night. All was calm. All is calm. We join hands and prepare for a time of prayer. Isn't it fitting that on the night that he was born, there was a calmness, there was a brightness, there was a peace in the air. Isn't it interesting? The closer we are to Christ, the greater the peace. Isn't that interesting? Wherever you saw Christ in Scripture, there was no anxiety. There was no mess. Things were bright, hopeful, joyful. And so on this season, as we bring our hearts and our minds to the throne, we receive God's great peace. Amen? 
And so as we prepare for prayer, we want to remember a number of individuals on our sick and shut-in list. We want to remember Sister Beverly Lee, uh, Brother Rufus Linder, uh, Sister Mary, uh, Marjan Ford, uh, Sister Pamela Brown, uh, the headmaster of our academy, Dr. M. O. Clark, Sister Portia Denise Martin, Sister Cheryl Furbush. We also want to remember our own Deacon Danny Outlaw, who's going to have a surgery a procedure tomorrow. Uh, we continue to lift up his daughter Stephanie, his son Danny, and his wife Rose. We want to remember in our prayers today uh, Deacon Ed Henderson, Deacon Rudy Hicks, and Deacon Glenn Dixie. Pray for my wife, Sister Pam, and pray for Brother John and Sister Hattie Collins. Pray for Sister Joy Coffey. Sister Tomiko Anderson. I want to pray for our organist, Brother James, whose nephew was killed in an accident this past week. We want to pray for our own deacon chair, Deacon James Garner, whose 38-year-old nephew suddenly died this week as well. And then uh, on tomorrow, December 23rd, will be the seventh year of the homegoing of our Amen. Daddy, we just thank you this morning that truly you are the peace that passes all understanding and that your peace keep us in the midst of everything. Daddy, we acknowledge and we want to come corporately right now, acknowledging that you are God and that you are supreme and that you rule and reign in the hearts of your people, God, and over every situation and opportunity that you have presented to us, God. Lord, as it has been lifted up the names of those, dear God, that are in the hospital, that are dealing with illnesses and symptoms, God, Lord, we are reminded that you are a healer, dear Father. You are the, you are the great I am, dear Father, and that you created us in your image and likeness, God, and that you are more than able to recreate, dear Father, and cause our, our body to comply, dear Father. And Lord, we come right now lifting up in faith, dear God, the prayers of the righteous for the healing, dear Father, that you are more than able to do, God. We thank you, Lord, that it is an opportunity to witness the power of God at work, dear Father, that we might share your testimony, God. And I thank you that because you are not a respecter of persons, God, I know that what you've done for me, dear Father, and my members, dear God, is you have healed me of breast cancer and concluded my radiation on Thursday, God, that you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above to all, dear Father, that believe and seek and receive you, O oh God. And I thank you, God, that because you're sovereign, dear Father, you're more than able, dear God. And we love you, Father. We exalt you, God, not for what you're able to do, but for just who you are, God. And then, Lord, as we lift up those, dear Father, that have celebrated the transition of family members, dear God. Lord, having been there, God, having lost seven members in less than nine months, starting with our son, dear Father. Lord, I am reminded, dear God, that you are, dear Father, the great I am, the comforter, dear God. I thank you, dear Father, that you are our joy, dear Father. And our joy is not contingent upon the circumstances, God, but it's contingent upon the great I am, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father, right now that you comfort those, dear God, in those transition, God, and that they see it as an opportunity to bear witness of a true and living God, dear Father. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, God. And I thank you, dear Father, for those that are in the body of Christ, that right now they are the great cloud of witnesses, dear Father. I thank you, dear Father, as we are reminded of, our, of the shepherd that you had set in the house here, dear Father, that even now, dear Father, he oversees, dear Father, as a part of the great cloud of witnesses is looking on to this body of Christ, dear Father, saying, fulfill what God has commissioned you to do, God. And we thank you right now, dear Father. We thank you, Lord, that you comfort the families, dear Father, in this process, dear God. We thank you, dear Father, that they are reminded, dear Father, that you said you never leave them nor forsake them, dear Father. And I thank you, dear Father, that we can grieve
believe, dear Father, but not as those that have no hope, dear Father. And we thank you, Daddy. And Lord, we thank you, dear Father, for the unspoken prayers, dear Father, for those, dear Father, that are in between, dear Father, employment, dear God, that you are more than able to meet their needs, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father, that you are the great source, dear Father, and you have many resources to provide, dear Father. And Lord, we thank you for the streams of provision, dear Father, right now, God. Lord, we thank you, dear Father, that during this time of Christmas, dear Father, when we go, dear Father, and return to our families, God, that we are reminded, dear Father, that you are the greatest gift, dear God. And we thank you, dear Father, for that gift that was given to us in Bethlehem, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father, that you were slain before the foundations of the earth, dear God, and that you had already prepared and made a way for us, oh God. And we thank you right now, Father. We thank you for the word that will come forth today, dear God. Lord, we proclaim that our hearts are fertile ground and that we will receive that word and hide it in our hearts, dear God, that we not sin against you, oh God, but God, that we will apply that word in our lives, dear Father. We thank you right now, dear Father, for unity in the body of Christ, dear Father. We thank you right now, dear Father, for the spirit of unity, the spirit of joy, the spirit of hope, and the spirit of love that flows from breast to breast, dear Father. It is in the mighty and matchless name in which we have been given. We proclaim it all in Jesus' name. Amen.
a joyous day Ooh. to all our friends and family. Ooh. This line we want you to remember. Ooh. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. To all, to all of you, yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas from the Brotherhood Choir. So these are your <laughs> announcements. Maybe it's better. These are the announcements for the. <laughs> Let's give them another hand. God bless you guys. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let me. Uh, good morning, Green Forest. Uh, let me just share a couple things with you. First of all, do we have any of our college students uh, that are with us this morning? If you're uh, any of our college students, if you're here, will you stand? We want to recognize our... Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Our college students. All right. There they are. God bless you guys. Amen. 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 Well, congratulations on you, to you for uh, completing your first semester. Uh, those of you that are freshmen and the others of you just continue to press on. Amen. God bless you. Uh, uh, very quickly, uh, several things here. Uh, if you check your bulletin, the church office will be closed for uh, Christmas uh, beginning Tuesday and continuing through uh, Friday of uh, next uh, week. Uh, church office will open back up on Saturday morning. Also, we have our annual Christmas Eve candlelight service. Uh, let me see the hands of those of you who uh, have never been to a candlelight service here at Green Forest. If you've not had a chance to come to one, raise your hand. It is an awesome experience. It really is. It's only about an hour, an hour, 15 minutes or so, but it's just a, a, a glorious way to ease into uh, Christmas. And uh, uh, we would encourage you uh, to be here and participate uh, in that service. And then watch night. Uh, as always, we have two watch night services. We have a 6.30 service in the chapel and a 9.45 service here. Originally, the 6.30 service was primarily for our senior adults who didn't like to drive at night and for uh, families with smaller children. But it has morphed into something altogether different. Uh, and so it's a great, great time. And uh, our theme this year, our theme for watch night is Oh, Give Thanks. Oh, give thanks. Uh, before I say any more about that, uh, are there any members of the fellowship team here this morning? Any members of the fellowship team here this morning? Okay, they were trying to make a decision today whether or not they were going to do the, um, the uh, break in bread at midnight. Um, so they're going to make a call on that. Uh, at this point, it does not appear as if that's going to take place. That's just an update on that. But as I said, our watch night theme is, Oh, Give Thanks, and it comes from Psalm 100. And if there's anybody that has something to give God thanks for, come on, church. Come on, church. Doesn't matter how much we may have suffered this year. God has continue to be faithful. God continues to bring us through. Come on, church. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He continues to demonstrate his faithfulness, faithfulness to us in so many ways. He's been faithful to each of us as individuals. There's not a person in here that can say God has not been faithful faithful. He has. And then he has been extremely faithful to us as a local body 
of baptized believers right here at Green Forest. As we think about the tumultuous uh, year that we have gone through, and it's not just Green Forest, other churches, but we're just dealing with Green Forest. And through it all, God has been faithful. There have been times this year when we stared financial, serious, serious financial crisis in the eyes. But I'm here to say that God's faithfulness and working through the faithfulness and the obedience of his people has turned that thing around. See, I just think that the word says that, 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 that if God has blessed us, we got to give him the thanks and the praise. Amen? So we thank him for his faithfulness with um, our financial challenges. It's amazing. We also are thankful to faithful members. This is a faithful congregation. Members who faithfully give of their time and their talents and their treasure in ministry service. We also are thankful for staff members. Those who support the work of ministry on a full-time basis. And so, uh, Green Forest, uh, today we want to um, just express our appreciation and our thanks. So it's a good thing to thank those who labor alongside of you. Amen? And, and I don't want to take anything away from the members, because it's the body that is tasked with doing the work of ministry. Amen? But there are those who uh, serve in ministry as their devotional calling. And so in the bulletin are the names of staff members, full-time staff members. And uh, we ask that you will pray for them, but also uh, that you would take time out in your own way to express, express appreciation to them and encourage them. An encouraging word goes a long way. Amen. You can um, uh, send a card or write a thank you note, or send an email or a gift or a token of your appreciation. Uh, following the second service today, uh, there's going to be a reception, a, um, a, um, a staff appreciation reception in the fellowship hall. Not a service, not a program but in a, uh, a, a reception. And so uh, if you have a card or a gift that you'd like to drop off, you can do it there or you can do it at a later time. I'm going to ask uh, uh, all full-time staff members that are present at this Thank service, will you stand? You. All full-time staff members, Thank will you stand? You. Amen. And then I want to, as part of this recognition, recognize those uh, staff members whose service, uh, ministry service, uh, came to an end this year. I don't know if they're available at this service, but I'll, let me call their names. We have Sister Betty Jackson. Betty Jackson, are you here? Okay. Uh, Joseph Lawrence, are you here? All right. We do have one that I do know is here, and I'm going to ask uh, that she come to the front in Reverend Cody if you'll go down. And that's Sister Mildred McNair. Sister McNair, would you come? Amen. Amen. We are. Just, just a token, that's all it is, to express our appreciation for 14 years of faithful, dedicated service. Come on, y'all, let's give it up to Sister Mildred Magnair. God bless you, dear, and thank you. And I haven't seen him, but I don't want to overlook, but is Deacon Ralph White here? It's Deacon Ralph White here at this service. Okay, we're also recognizing him 
for his 14 plus years of faithful, dedicated service. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so I, I encourage you now, this uh, staff appreciation is not pastor appreciation. This is not for me. It's not about me because I stand alongside of you to express my appreciation to them for what they do. And, and, and let me just add this. Um, it is very difficult for an individual to uh, work and worship at the same place. You, if you've got friends or relatives that serve on a church staff somewhere, you just ask them sometimes. Because here's the way it works. We see the good, the not so good, and the other in people. And when you see the not so good and the other, and then you have to worship beside them, that's a challenge. Amen? And, and, and it's, it's unique for a staff person because it's a higher calling. It really is. And, and a staff person doesn't have the luxury to go off on people, to roll up their sleeve and take off their earrings and tell you what they really think or feel. They just don't have that luxury. Amen? And so it's hard. But that's the calling. And you can't serve in this kind of a role unless you've been called. So once again, join me in expressing our appreciation for all of our full-time staff members. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, the Colmans to come up very quickly, very quickly, uh, very quickly. I think we have a video, and I think that's going to be the gist of it. Come on up, and then we'll have the ushers to come down for our offertory. Is that, uh, is that, who's that doing the sign there this morning? Who signed, is that Lorraine Edwards? Lord, I'm telling you folks, buried her son on yesterday, and here serving today. And this family, the way they conducted, exemplified, carried themselves, was a thing to behold. They were just extraordinary in how they allowed their faith in God to lead them through that celebration. God bless you, Sister Edwards and Brother Edwards as well. Wow. Amen. Good morning, Green Forest, and Merry Christmas. As we celebrate the birth of Christ. We want to talk with you again about the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. But our appeal this morning takes a look at a more personal life of a Southern Baptist missionary. Some of you may remember that last year we introduced to you Eric Reese, who was serving in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Eric serves in one of the most crime-ridden areas of Rio. Every day he is surrounded by drugs, theft, prostitution, murder, human trafficking. You name the crime and Eric deals with it daily. Shortly after we met Eric last year, he suffered a life-threatening knee infection. He returned home here in Georgia and had seven very painful surgeries. Eric ended up spending nearly two years stateside, but his heart and passion were always in Rio with the people who needed him most. I had a chance to visit with Eric and his family this summer in Valdosta, Georgia. I can tell you that he is truly eager to get back in God's service. Well, I will let Eric tell you his story and how the Lottie Moon offering has supported him and his family in a major way. Video, please. From Georgia, and we see you greetings from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. My name is Russ Reese. I've been married for 20 years to the Lord Reese, and we have two lovely daughters, Alicia Reese and Gloria Reese. We have been serving for now almost 14 years, reaching out to hurting people in. Greetings, 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 Greetings,
from Georgia. Okay, well, um, the gist of it is that uh, Eric underwent uh, seven surgeries. Um, he talked about how the Lottie Moon offer had made it possible for him uh, to have the medical uh, attention that was necessary. And uh, just this past September, Eric was cleared to go back to Rio. And guess what? Three days later, him and his family were there. Oh, wow. What a testimony and what a commitment to be a servant to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you, Green Forest, for your support of missionaries like Eric. Uh, will the ushers come forward? Yeah. Last year we had a tremendous uh, response to the offering. Um, this year our goal is to raise a minimum of $10,000. So Green Forest, we need your support. Uh, the envelopes are in the pews. We ask that uh, you consider a donation. If you don't have one of the Lottie Moon offerings, just take one of the regular envelopes and just write Lottie Moon across it. Let us pray. To our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we praise your holy name once again this morning. We want to say a special prayer for those who have taken up the challenge and gone to the far lands from their home to spread the gospel. We thank you for their obedience and their command, commitment and their willingness to sacrifice everything, including their lives, in order to let your people know about your promise of everlasting life. We pray that they will continue to be bold and spread the word and pray that those who hear the word will come to support and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And while we can't go to the international fields, dear Lord, we as a congregation can pray and support them financially. So we thank you for what we do. In this prayer we ask in your name, amen. amen.
Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you for this awesome opportunity to speak your word to your people. I pray that each person here can look beyond me and see you. After all, everything we do Everything we say, everything we are, is all about you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. i first like to thank our pastor, Pastor Mitchell, for this opportunity to stand here before you. Pastor Cody, other ministers, officers, friends, family, my husband, Chester, and Daryl upstairs. We just want to thank all of you for being here, for being here and to support me in this effort. Our lesson for today is entitled, Looking for Real Love. Looking for Real Love. On this fourth Sunday of the Advent season, the season that culminates in the birth of Jesus Christ, we focus on the theme of love. We are blessed to have God's word as our guide for Christian living. God showed us how he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we could have eternal life through him. And we are so grateful. Isaiah 7 and 14 shares the prophecy of the birth of Jesus Christ. All right then, the Lord himself will choose the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. Our study today furthers that great prophecy. It is found in the New Testament book of Luke. 
Let us stand as we read together the prophecy of Simeon as found in Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. Again, that's Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The NIV version. Let's all read. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that was spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Thank you, you may be seated. Our topic for today is entitled, Looking for Real Love. Again, in scriptural basis is Luke chapter two, verses 25 through 35. On last Saturday, I officiated my very first wedding. It was here at Green Forest. It was a beautiful occasion with a couple who very obviously were deeply in love with each other. You could see it in their eyes. You could see it in their smiles. You could see it in how they looked at each other. You can see it in how they shared their vows with one another. My prayer continues to be with this and all other couples who stand before God and a crowd of witnessing, making a commitment to each other, that this very same love, this very same feeling would last for years and years to come after the ceremony. However, the problem is that oftentimes these wonderful feelings we initially have just don't last. We generally think of love as some type of feeling. If you are attracted to me, you be nice to me, you meet my needs and love me, then I in return will love you. The world's love is based on getting something from someone else. The world does not give love when it does not benefit themselves. If you do not please me, then I have no love for you. Thus, for the world, love must be earned by making someone else feel good. The biblical example of real love is shown in God's love for the sinner. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. True biblical love is a matter of will, not of emotion. God chose to love us and is not predicated on what we do. Now, there are three types of love. Agape love, also called charity, is used to describe God's love. Then there's filio used to refer to fervent love for another person. And eros is love refers to sexual love. Our proposition for today is, in spite of what you think your role in a love situation might be, real love 
True love love. comes from God. As we study the prophecy of Simeon in Luke 2, let us look at looking for real love as we focus on the points. One, looking with his will. Two, looking with obedience. And three, looking with action. Let's look at looking with his will. There are at least four Simeons in the Bible. There was a Simeon in the Old Testament who was the second son of Jacob and Leah and became the patriarch of the Israeli Simeon tribe. Then there was uh, Simeon Niger, sometimes, uh, who was a prominent early prophet teacher in the church of Antioch. And then sometimes the Apostle Peter was referred to as Simeon. But today, in Luke 2, there's still another Simeon. This Simeon didn't have much written about him. But what was written was exceptional. Simeon was described as a righteous and devout man who was nearing the end of his life. Scripture also said that Simeon deeply loved God, and God deeply loved Simeon. In fact, he loved him so much that he sent his Holy Spirit to tell him that he had a very special assignment. Can you imagine being given a special assignment by God through the Holy Spirit? Would your response be, why me? Or would it be, Lord, what would you have me do? Think about it. Scripture says that Simeon has spent his whole life in and around the temple in Jerusalem. He waited at the temple for what he called the consolation of Israel. When we hear the word consolation, we think about comfort. Consolation is something that makes someone feel better after they're disappointed or they're sad. To call Jesus the consolation of Israel takes us back when the Lord had earlier promised Abraham, I will make you a great nation, and through you all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Now, reaffirmation of this promise continued on through Isaac and through Jacob. Later, God told Moses that one day a great prophet would come who would be unlike any other prophet before him. God promised David a son who would reign on his throne forever. Now, these promises were repeated from generation to generation. Jewish children were taught to pray for the Messiah's appearance. So there were centuries of expectation built up. Some people thought that the Messiah would be a political leader. Others thought the Messiah would be God himself. Still others expected a second Moses or a second Elijah. So there was a lot of confusion and a lot of expectation down through the years. The Christmas Carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, puts it this way. O Little Town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Yes, there were a lot of hopes and fears. But Simeon was filled with the Holy Spirit. And as he held the Christ child, he could only see the love that God had for his people. Simeon knew for a fact that God was in charge of his life. Simeon knew when he allowed the will of God to direct his every action, he would be blessed to personally see the Messiah, 
the salvation of the world. The same is true of all of God's children. When we allow the will of God to guide us in every part of our lives, we too will be truly blessed. God will never lead us astray. He loves us just so much and only wants what's best for us. So as we look for real love, we must allow God to direct our path. As he did Simeon, God just might be sending you to that special place where your future real love is also waiting. Number two. Looking with obedience. with obedience. The Bible commands us in Mark 12, 30-31, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Yeah. This is the first commandment. And the second is, you should love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Not only did Simeon wait on the will of God to be manifested, he was obedient to the commands of God. Yeah, yeah. When Simeon was led to the temple, he went. At the temple, Simeon took the Christ child in his arms and praised God for him. He knew that this child brought life to the world. He also knew that he was personally coming to the end of his own life. Simeon prayed, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation while you have prepared for all your people. He is a light to reveal God to this nation, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Although there was not a lot written in scripture about Simeon. It is obvious in his prayer that Simeon was a learned man. He had learned that God's gift of Jesus was the salvation of the world. He was the light of the world and the glory of the world. Simeon was a learned man. So as we study God's word, we see that God had specific characteristics that are demonstrated by godly deeds. They are demonstrated in thoughts, in words, and actions. God expects our obedience in demonstrating these characteristics today. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag. Love is not arrogant. Love does not act unbecomingly. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. Love does not take into action a wrong suffered. Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. Love rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. And love never fails. All of God's commands for living are based on loving God, and loving others in a biblical manner. But Simeon had something else to do. He had to share a special prophecy with Mary. He told her that Jesus would divide the nation into two groups. One group would respond positively to him, while the other would oppose him. The sword refers to the pain experienced by anyone who identifies with Jesus and fill the world as they reject him. But because God is love, when we are looking for the love of our life, we must obediently display godly characteristics ourselves. It is only then that we can attract a love who also displays godly characteristics. Number three. Looking with action. Love is more than a feeling. 
Let me repeat that. Love is more than a feeling. It's an action word. Love produces action. And if love is present, it will be seen. It's not simply enough to tell someone that you love them, especially when you have nothing to show for it. However, when we behave lovingly towards someone, we are showing real love. So always keep in mind that feelings can be deceptive. Yes. What, we perceive, what we perceive as love may in fact be another emotion. But actions cannot be mistaken. Right. So rather than ask, what is love? We must ask, do I perform acts of love for my beloved? And does my beloved perform acts of love for me? Love is about giving, not getting. Love is about giving, not getting. God showed his love when he gave his only begotten son. John 13, 3 through 17 states, The Lord Jesus Christ, in demonstrating his love, served others even though he was a master. God kept his promise to allow him to see Christ before he died to Simeon. Now he had peace. Christ would surely save his soul. Simeon didn't, as we sometimes would think, he didn't plead for more time on earth. Simeon teaches us that they who wait for Christ need not fear death. God alone is the source of real love. He poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. God love then awakens a response in the other person of positive action in those who accept his love. God chose Simeon, an otherwise unimportant man whose only claim to fame was being faithful to God through obedience. He wasn't some rich ruler or some important politician. He was just an ordinary man who loved God and lived his life for him. Likewise, God chose all of us. He didn't have to do it. But he did it because he loved us so. And in spite of how we behave sometimes. So let us depend on his love to guide us all the way. So as we look for real love in our lives, let us, one, look with his will. Two, look with obedience. And three, look with action. Never let your love candle burn out. Let it burn brightly for Jesus. Our spiritual truths are, one, God will fulfill his word and perform his plan. Two, God uses people who wait for Jesus. And three, those who wait for Christ need not fear death. As we come to the end of this sermon, we want you to think about your life. Is Christ in your life? Is Christ the real love of your life? A lot of times we, we often hear, hear different ones say, aren't you glad you saved? Yes, yes we are. But then we got to remember that there are those among us who have not had that opportunity to acknowledge him as our personal Lord and Savior. At this time, we want to give you that opportunity. We want you to know that God loves you. God loves each and every one of us. He wants us to realize that this is true love. It's not that artificial feeling only, emotion only. God truly loves us. 
And at this time, if you have not accepted him as your personal savior, we ask that you come forward and ask the God to come into your life, to come into your life at this time. Secondly, we like there are those who may be among us who do not have a church home. We would like for you to make Green Forest that home. If you do not have a home and you want to come, please come forth right now. God is waiting. God's arms are waiting for you. And then, if you are here, and we know this is the holiday season, and your heart is heavy, there are so many things that are going on, whether it's with jobs, with family, with friends, with money issues, and you want to talk to the Lord about that, you want to come to him for prayer, you can do so at this time. If you feel that you want to present yourself for prayer to the Lord, please do so. You can come at this time. Thank you so much. Amen. Will there be one this morning? Will there be one? Jesus, the light of the world. Oh, yeah. Walk in the light. Whoa. Beautiful light. Somewhere the dew drops of mercy. Whoa. Shines all around us by day and by night. Jesus. Jesus, the light. Come on, let's see. Thank you, Lord. Walk in the light, what a light, beautiful light, somewhere the dew drops of mercy, Whoa. shines all around us by day and by night, one more time, Jesus, one more time, come on, thank you Lord, walk in the light, walk in the light, beautiful light, beautiful light, the new drops of mercy shine, shine, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Jesus is the light in a dark world. His love, real love, out all darkness and the word to us this day is that we don't have to settle for a watered down version of love we don't have to settle for an imitation love we don't have to settle for a conditional love we don't have to settle for a love that is based on our giving something we don't have to settle for a love that if they don't feel good uh, you're not going to get no love there's real love and, and that love comes from the one who died on Calvary to show his love the one who was buried in the grave who early Sunday morning with all power in his and that's true love and but he wasn't finished for he sent his son his spirit rather his spirit to give us the light walk in the light the beautiful light with his spirit in us oh my soul but that ain't it that's not the end of the story for one day he's coming back again amen and so we walk in the love real love of Jesus Christ amen so we look to his will we look to obey him and we look to serve him. Yeah, with our passion. Amen. Amen for the message today. Real love. And amen for the messenger today, Dr. Jackie Henderson. Amen.
Amen. Reach out and grab hold of the hands of the person next to you today. We thank God. Uh, for some, uh, this will be our, our last time together before Christmas. For those of you who will be traveling, we pray God's traveling grace and God's traveling mercy to be with you. And should we not see each other until 2014, uh, let us uh, pray that God's face will continue to shine upon us. And we need to be mindful that all God gives any of us is one day. Which is, which is to say, if we don't see you again, we'll see you on the other side. Amen. Amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. Go ahead. Come on, Come on up, Jackie. Jackie. Sweet, sweet. the spirit of I feel the spirit in this place thank you Lord glory to your name sweet expression morning real love will put joy in your heart thank you Lord I know that it's the prayer Lord, go with us and keep us. Sweet Holy Spirit. Oh, sweet Heavenly Dove, thank you. Sweet Heavenly Dove. We need you, we need you to stay right here with us. We can't make it without you. Filling us with real love. Your name and for all these blessings, we lift our hearts and pray. But without a doubt, we know. Heavenly Father, let the words of your mouth, the meditation of your heart, be acceptable in thy sight, your word, your redeemer. Amen. to the eyes of the one next to you realizing that the life is precious. Look at him and just say, I show enough, show enough. Love you. Amen. Give him a hug. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.